Well, hello and welcome everyone to part 17 of the D7 Battle Cruisers. Um, today we're actually going to start working on painting some detail work on the nacelles, getting all that cleaned up. So let's go take a look. All right, here we are. Um, I went through and painted a few things. Um, on the top, I got the silver on up here on the details on the uh, older kit that had the details here, which this is the uh, Ramion ship. So, and then this is what I did with the uh, lighting part of, for the uh, impulse engine and uh, impulse grill. Got that working all good. Um, and then I took silver tape and put it on the opposite side of the blue painter's tape so it would reflect the light up inside there. <clears throat> and then the blue painter's tape holds it up there and actually helps light block some, especially back here, because I know that's going to want to bleed through that seam. But, uh, you know, there's nothing really much in here. That's why I didn't do any light blocking or anything like that in, in the inside here. But uh, I was thinking about just grabbing right, you know, like that. At least with this one I can to see how the other one is but I could probably just solder them right to that and then the main wire I got to put the resistor on the other one but we'll worry about the wiring later but I'll show you where else what else we got done here um, the top of the Cobra head looks really good it's a subtle difference between the shades of gray but you can kind of see that this is lighter than that so and, and these detail pieces are sticking out better uh, got that part silver just like I did on the Klingon one and left left the little bulb the light gray so that's gonna have the same kind of effect um, what else do we do and then on underneath um, all these are cleared out so the lights coming through that good which allowed me then to paint the gray the darker gray up in here which matches the the top and then that allowed me to do the silver there so the silver is all in there as you can see um, and I think I have to look but I think this is like a gold or I might even do it an antique bronze this little weird square shape thing and now I just masked off for the engines um, we're gonna I'm gonna do the same as what I did with the Klingon I'm gonna do these a uh, a gun metal and then they get the chrome piece that goes across there unlike the Klingon ship which is the more accurate and newer uh, parts that they changed let me take that off because it's just gonna slide this is the new uh, tooling that they did for this older kit. This gray one, this the ramen is the older kit, and you can tell because it has the bumps here. Um, I don't know if you can see them. Uh, it's got the bigger holes for the. Uh, I, I like to call them antenna. <laughs> I don't know why, um, but yeah, it's gonna. You know, and I didn't like in the beginning. I did have those puttied off so I could do smaller holes like here these I did nice and small to be more tannin um, I was gonna do small green ones but I was like let's just leave it alone um, still have that window mark marked off where here they molded that correctly in the new tooling in which I already have silvered as well um, but here's the uh, the newer detail which is supposed to be more accurate and that whole center section gets uh, silver and then and then that's what the uh, back of the engines look like so that gives us that cool and I like having that green stripe like the Katinga has that on the side I think the Katinga the whole back is black I'm not sure if it's supposed to be but that's what I did on mine but uh, so 
so that's going to be the difference between the two. And this has the old school molded part that'll go there, and this is the newer detail that's supposed to be ac more accurate. And I'll show you the, what what's going to go in there, the chrome piece. That will be the the chrome piece that goes there. Goes something like that. So I'm leaving some of the gray. I thought about just doing the whole thing of black, but I'm leaving. I'm going to leave it gray behind it and just do the the. Uh, gun steel just on the uh, these round parts and make that flat and we'll just have the chrome this chrome piece will just float in the sea of gray there I think that's the best way to do it I'm not sure or should I just do the whole thing gun steel and have the chrome sit over it I don't know I think that'd be a lot of black back there I think that'll work. Yeah, I think I'll like that. And I, I can always go back and and hit it with the uh, gun steel if I don't like it. Put you on there where you belong. So, but yeah, that that came out really good. What I did is I just took some of the Tamiya tape and just laid it right across. Nice thing about the Tamiya tape is it's so thin. You can see the kind of detail underneath and then I, you know, I would use this toothpick to push the tape down tight on the edges here and then I took my knife and cut along it and then peeled that off and left the rest of the tape to protect that and just painted it away and then peeled it up and that's what was left and it came out better than I thought because it didn't seem to want to cut correct and I didn't want to cut you know like really press in so I was kind of really really coming in at an angle you know instead of like down really coming at an angle and then what the nice thing is it doing that masking it it gives me that nice silver edge there like the trim because it is a raised it does have a border and then it has the grill lines going like that so but it came out really nice so I'm really happy with that and that will be a nice little feature for the older ship and ramen ship even though it's what Matt Jeffries I think why they did that on that older kit is it, they went off of one of Matt Jeffries drawings instead of what they actually made for the TV show. And it might be the reason why it has those bumps there and they never did that. They just skipped all that hard stuff. So, I took some uh, striping mass tape and masked those off. More of a guideline and uh, we'll take it from here. I got my uh, gunmetal gray from Folk Arts. I love this gray because it's got a nice metallic in it. So it looks kind of dark. It does look like a gunmetal. More so than my, I think, what do I have here from Model Masters. This is its gunmetal and it's not as metallic -y, you know. It might need to be mixed a little more, but it's not as metallic -y. And this is an enamel. And I like the... I like this better. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to mix it up, give it a little, a little thinned out a little more. That's probably more than what I need, but, you know. It was only $1.99 for this bottle, and it's thick, so you got 
a lot more now, almost twice as much, because you are going to thin it out every time you use it. I don't know if there's enough water left in this thing. Let's see. Um, we're going to use this brush and probably a wide one. So, but we'll use this to mix. That's going to be much. I don't want to make this too thin. Because then it'll run, you know, where I mask, it'll want to run underneath it. If it's a little thicker, it'll stop. But I want it thin enough that it, you know, it has a better chance of laying down flat. I'm pretty small amounts of paint. I don't use my little mixer, my little mixing thing. And what we'll do is... Start painting on. I like to start right where this meets. Try to get this good. Cause we're not taping that off. We're just pushing paint in there. It might be a little thinner than I did last time, but oh well, it's working. It's working. on this edge and I want that edge to look really nice. But since it's a curve it's hard. get it right the first time I won't have to really worry about it the way it wants to pull up and the key is to have the same angle but I think that's looking okay could be better Masking area, I'm not going to hit with heavy paint, just going to lightly hit it with paint. During the first coat. That way the, the paint that you put in there will actually seal it up from it wanting to get in there and run. Yeah, I'm liking it. I remember from last time I want to get down in here. I don't think 
much as possible. So when the engine caps come on, you won't see them. You won't see the inside there. Let's do the top halves first. We'll let this dry. You always want to try to do long, even strokes, especially your first one. Alright, so how'd that look going up? And the part I'm talking about is where this meets, where it meets there. If you can, you can look from this side and see that edge. And uh, there's no way not to hit it, so you just try to it nice so it's not so noticeable but I don't want it to go paint the whole wall and that's that's looking respectable now we do the same on the side without accidentally touching Key is the try to keep moving as smooth as you can. Once you get in there and touch that wall or that that edge, I should say. And a good amount of paint helps because the brush pushing that paint along gives you that nice little edge. That's about as good as we're going to get that. And again, I'll use a less painted brush. edges of the where the masking tape is so I'll actually paint that yeah that's pretty good it's not there's not a lot of paint on that you just gotta watch uh, you know, where you set the model down I'm probably gonna have some cleanup right in this corner here where the tape because the tapes doing this and uh, the vinyl tape's not best for those type of bends. The Tamiya tape would be a better thing because it's so thin. It can make up any shape pretty much. But I didn't want to use Tamiya tape when I only really needed just thin strips to get in here otherwise you know to me a tape I would have had a problem with that raised bump right there that the actual chrome piece will slide over all right I'm pretty happy with that for the most part you look at them and they look pretty even as far as I'm looking at that edge where I first go up to. I think I, yeah, yeah. I'm okay with that. Maybe hit a little bit with the dryer. There we go. Now let's hit the bottom edge bottom ones. 
first I thought this paint was a little thin, but I might need another drop. But we'll do that towards the end. Sometimes I like to put my last coat or two thinner. Edge I concentrate on first because sometimes, like I said, I can most of the time. I won't have to go back there and touch that up. That one worked really nice, I must say. looking pretty good very happy and I'm thinking I only, only need well I'll probably need two more coats I can't remember how many coats the last time it took I think I think it took two and I might thin that out just a hair more now that we're getting I'm sorry so it is, yeah, it is good to make sure it dries good between each co coat, especially when you're uh, brushing it. Because you'll soften, like I said, you'll soften the next coat up with the, uh, or the coat underneath with the, with the next coat. So I think we're good, and what we'll start at the top, since that's where we started first time. It still might be a little thick. Let's see. No, it's not bad. Like I said, I shouldn't have to go. Oh, that is actually helping. better curve on the wall so oh yeah that looks good problem is there's no place to put my finger to stabilize it that dry like this is already yeah it's already dry to the touch it's the nice thing about winter time is the air is so dry everything dries quicker I'm just gonna keep on trucking here and then I think I'm gonna thin it even more because it's still a little on the thick side just gotta be careful we don't touch the top and I see something I don't like on that one I mean I think it would have dried fine but just in case while I was here yeah but we just got to be a little careful Ooh. unlike what I was there Well, I lucked out. It didn't. I had. I. Not following my own 
suggestions and I went right up in there with a glob of wet a loaded brush. You don't ever want to do that. I'm trying to stay thin around the masking too so I don't get this real big tape line. I mean it'll be okay because it can kind of act as the, the actual panel. sure knowing <laughs> that it's gonna if it doesn't leak down in between those where the tape had to do a boop 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 if it doesn't doesn't leak around that tape it'll be a miracle There we go. Let's leave it like that. Let's give this brush a clean. Since it's getting globby. Alrighty. Should we do a quick dry again? Or should I? I might let that dry on its own because it helps it level out here. But uh, we'll give it a second to dry and then we'll come back and uh, thin that out while I'm waiting for that to dry. Okay, I got a little carried away and kept on uh, painting and pulled the masks off and I had to touch up like I said in those little corners there because the vinyl tape when it's coming up and going over this bump let a little bit leak in some spots but easy touch up just uh, mostly with acrylics I can just scrape it's a little harder with these metallic ones the metallic paints are a little more stretchy like rubbery where the or like you know this gray here if I needed to scrape any of the darker gray off here it would just flake right off but the metallics seem to have a little more of a difference to them that makes them a little more uh, flexible when you go to you know maybe I'm not letting it dry long enough I don't know but yeah it definitely uh, will stretch when you grab like a big piece it wants to stretch it so it's not as easy to clean up um, especially if it gets thick um, but there it looks good and I like it with the with the gray left uh, totally open in the center I think that looks really good and I had to do little gray touch-ups where you know it's just hard to get in there without getting this wet so 
I just dabbed a little bit of a gray in there, and but it looks good. And I'm very, very happy with that. Very happy. Um, and then when we get these chrome parts in there, it will look like that floating in the in the uh, gray, and I'll, I think that's gonna look really good. Yeah, because those should just go up. Something's. Yeah, that should go like that. And, uh. It'll sit there floating, which will be cool. And have the gray around it. And then, the, then uh, I went and finished these. I, last time I showed you, I was just doing the, the gun metal. I went around and did the, the gray. So, the end caps are ready. And I already cleared them, so I can handle them. So let's glue these on, and then uh, I'm going to call it a night. And then the next thing it looks like it's going to be is getting the wiring done. Put the you know proper resistor on the SMD LED. Um, this one here I can reach up to the top and still have room. One here be cutting it tight I might make a little jumper for this one because so I made this neck wire really long and this one not as long for it to reach up to that top and I want to make sure I have enough that I can glue these areas and then set the top down so I'll definitely put an extension on that one this one I might be able to get away without you know I might still put it or or a connector it would be really nice I got like a bunch of these little connectors I think I do. Where I can uh, I was just reorganizing some of these compartments. And I got those are those and these that's for those. Cause I have a bunch of these that I got for the Falcon because that's what they use. And also, if I want to make little circuit boards, breadboards, I have little breadboards where I can make, especially like something on the Falcon where I had multiple of lights, but I wanted to go to one source and put a breadboard, made a breadboard there, had all the lights plug in, and then uh, ran one single power wire to that feed. And I, you know, and actually, I was gonna, you know insert these into the breadboard these are the the male ends um and you know plug every light in and i just found it's just easier just to hard solder them and then i would make these as the plugs for if i wanted to plug unplug that circuit board if i had to replace the main board the controller but i could make these work as a plug Even though these are made to go on a board to this end, but I could easily solder a wire on here and shrink tube it and then still plug that in. And since I got a bunch of these, maybe that's what I'll do. Because then I don't have to, then I can get the glue on here, then connect, and then lay down. That's probably what I'm going to do. That's a good idea. And this is actually one from the Falcon. <laughs> the yellow and orange. I figure I keep them. That's, you know, I can always, you know, I left enough wire. I could always tie into that for some reason. But, hmm, that's, that's what we'll do. We'll make a connector. Kind of like um, Gary Hughes did with my, uh, what he gave me for the, uh, NX1, that way, you know, for the top and bottom, he made connections, you know. That way you can wire all up there and then have a connector and then another connector in the bottom and you can just plug them in. Which makes a lot more sense. So we'll do that. I don't have the SJ whatever connectors, but those will work just fine. 
And I think that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll put a, you know, I'll get all this soldered up. I still got to drill a hole in here for the sort of post. And have them all soldered up to a connector and then just have a tail. Coming off of these two, the positive and negative, to another little connector, and then all I have to do, you know, I can even set it like this so I can connect like that. Boom. Tuck all the wires in, and boom. I think that would be the best way to do it. Yep, that'll be the way. That's. I'm actually thinking once in a while. Once in a while, I do think good kitties. <laughs> They're all sitting here staring at me. But, all right, let's get gluing to this piece on. And I'm going to use the old faithful testers. Thick. And what else did I find? Uh, this, to me, uh, here works really good, too. Because we want these on really stable, really good. And I gotta have to look up the other shit to see how these go on. And the nub goes to the outside with the little pointy things down. And what I mean by that is there's a little raised piece, which is a nub, and there's a little pointy thing that goes down. So this one's gonna be on this side, or nope, this side, because the nub's more that way on the outside. So you belong on this side. Because once you cut them off the, the sprue, it's hard to tell. All right, and always dry fit these because the last one I had to fix pretty good. That looks really good. And we don't need that no more. And this one. And these are much more level. Like, there's a little bit of a, a difference in the two sides of the nacelle on that, but not like the other one. But still enough. I think last time I took a grinder to a sander. That's what we're going to do this. It's perfectly flush in the front, but you can see it's a little bigger there. happens is it it hits and also want to check in here and there's a problem too there's a little stubby right there which could have been most of the problem because I forgot I saw that on the other ships had the same thing and it was only one side too could be something in their tooling which <laughs> be funny because then it's from a long time ago I also made sure I painted the inside here because you will see you can you do have the ability to see that is all staticky this side definitely fits a better let's look at this one again yeah. Let's see if this one, because if I 
No, I can't flip it. I flip it to the outside. Yeah, so you're that one and you're this one. Alrighty. Let's do a little hand scuffing. To, uh, get so weird. Yeah, you can go like that. That's better. And also, once I start gluing them, the, the uh, glue starts softening it. So, I don't like how I keep banging that down there. <laughs> I've been lucky so far, nothing's happened to that. Especially getting all that part looking nice. Alright. If I do that, these need to switch. This goes on the outside, and the pointy will now go up because that goes to the bottom. Away. Yeah, I don't see any. Just making sure there's nothing else that's gonna catch it. So what I'm what I did last time seemed to work really good is use the tube glue on the nacelle side. And since these are kind of hollow, and I take this, and this has a little more solvent in it than that, as far as, because it's more liquid. It's amazing how thick that is. It's, but it works really good. I'm very happy that I got this glue. And then I have uh, the... Uh, This is good for big pieces because it, its brush is huge compared to like the testers extra thin. That brush is nice and tiny, but it's also made to uh, flow into cracks and flow. Like you put the pieces, the, you hold the pieces together, then you apply that glue instead of how I'm applying the glue to the surface first. All right, nub on the outside. Point pointing down, which since the ship's upside down, it will be pointing up. Yeah, I like it. That one worked good, which this is the one I expect, and in this way I can. I can judge the other one. Alright, let's get some testers tube glue on here and this is a messy glue but it's all reliable it's what I grew up using and uh, one thing you just don't try to squeeze because one little oomph in this thing and it wants to ooze out like crazy but it'll the nice thing about that glue is it glues things together boy and uh, these little caps can easily get knocked right off so we want to glue them on really good yeah if you can see this brush is like really big but I will use it for applications like this it comes in quite handy gets me a lot of glue you can smell there's more of a solvent in here maybe because it's more liquidy than the you know the the tube glue which is more of a gel concentrate here because we're all screwed up nub on the outside and that little tip there which is hard for you to see it has a little point where the other side's a perfect round 
on the black part will that goes down, which in this case is going to be up. much easier than the other one. The other one, the one nacelle was way off. I mean, I when I first glued them together, I lined it m mainly with the front, you know, but it was really off. And the nice thing is this sets up a little faster than this does, so it's getting that. This can be here to really bond it, but this is, this uh, tester cement the more liquidy kind will uh, dry a little faster. And then once it really cures, I'm going to take the extra thin and just drop it in the little seams and it'll run down and fill any other. But another thick glue, I got, I get, you know, I got the normal testers tube and I have the Tamiya with the brush which is good for bulk, you know, pieces. But if I need something of the same, which just this glue is probably similar to that. Um, this is, was recommended as the uh, Ravel glue that has the uh, has a needle, so you can feed it small on the in an area that you want to with that needle, which is great. So, I did a whole glue purchase. I got that glue, I got the Tamiya glue and the cement uh, in the orange, which is a thicker glue. Then I got another one of these. This is the one I've had for a while. Extra thin, which you can set in seams and it runs, and which I'll show you in a sec. And then, probably something I won't use totally as much. It's pretty much the same as the extra thin it's even called the extra thin but it's a quick set so this will really set up like really quick almost like a super glue from what I've heard but pretty much the same glue for just probably more solvent in that thing and than the other I guess but I figured I'd try because I got a three pack of this one of these and the orange regular cement from Tamiya for a really good price and then I ordered this separate to have so then I also have this non-toxic testers it's a really slow um, setting up glue I guess it's all right I only used it a couple times but it's been a pain in the neck for it to come out for some reason I might have to feed something through it. They say keep tripping, but um, if I keep trimming, I'm going to be like way down there. The nice thing about it is it's non-toxic, so it doesn't have uh, those vapors. It actually smells good. It's kind of citrusy or whatever. But does it work as good as these or the regular? And it's it's runny. Not as runny as these probably more like the orange um, but I don't know it not having the toxicity I think it's just not it doesn't melt the plastic as quick or whatever I'm not sure I'd have to experiment a little more with it and see what how that works and where I would use that You never can go wrong. Always have a tube or two of these. They last quite a, quite long because you don't need a lot. It's just the downfall is it's stringy and you press on this even before you open the cap. As soon as you open the cap, look out. But it'll definitely bond things really well. So, all right. So, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, and that's setting up already. And that's that Tamiya orange. It starts setting up. If it was just the testers tube glue, it'd still I'd still be able I'd probably be 
Well, I could still pull it off, but I, you know, still be able to wiggle it really freely, and this is on there good. And that's why I like that new glues. But there she is. That looks good. That looks really good. Yeah. I'm very happy. A lot done today. Got those painted. Got that painted. Got these painted. Finished painting that up. Glued them on. We're getting there. All that looks good. Yeah, we're down to closing it. Closing it up. And like I said, we're going to do that connector trick. That's a great idea. Let's see her with her lid on. And like I, sh I showed you before with the nice silver detail on there. I'm really liking that. I thought about doing that a gun steel too, but I figured there's enough with all the with all the other chrome parts and stuff. I figured, you know, although it would be nice to pull some black up there, but the gun steel, but yeah, there's the Romulan ship. She's going to be nice. And I like the subtle differences in the grays. Which will keep it kind of on the cannon side as far as, you know, when you saw it from underneath. And then when I get the decals, which I haven't heard and I don't want to pester them. Um, JT... Getting that decal set from JT Graphics. That's for this, which will then give me the big Romulan bird here, and then the Romulan symbols to put. I imagine some are going to go here and here. Not sure all what the exactly. I can't remember what the set all comes with. But the, my biggest thing is to have that Romulan bird, just like the uh, bird of prey had. You know in the uh, original series so to have that on here is going to be cool but yeah all these little parts we'll wait to the end because they're all going to be chrome because that's those parts there to go on the bottom I you know and these are the pipes I'm gonna make sure that one's already unhooked those pipes go there and then these parts go here and then those go on there so keep that aside even though that's the newer kit <laughs> the chrome parts came with the newer kit but I figured we'd do the chrome on here because of the fact of uh, those pieces back here are, are, uh, they gave it with the new kit because they just used the same tree but yeah, coming along, looking good. Got to attack these windows too. Um, this kit comes pre-drilled, drilled ones there, but I want to drill these out, and then the ones in the neck that I'm gonna have right here. Get those going, cause so I have that little SMD hidden right in there. But yeah, I'm gonna call it a night. Um, got a lot done. She's now officially pretty much caught up. We got her here. There. there. And the Klingon version. Right there. So we got the dual D7s. And I love how they're, you know, going to be looking different. Looking different, but the same. What do we get on there? What's on there? Yep. And I like the differences. You know, we have differences in here. The color difference and the difference in the back of the nacelles. And this detail. So that really gives it a 
a difference between the two ships. Oh, and then, yeah, and this one has the clear green that's going to light out of this side, where this one's just going to be the, the stair steps and silver, which is canon for the Klingon ship, B7. I'm happy with the green. It's a little brighter than most what I see most people doing. Most people are more in that darker green. Um, but I liked how Polar Lights, their pre-painted one, was that light green. It was even a more of a blue, almost washed out green. It's almost like a white with a green tint. Um, but, so I figured I'd do the in-between, you know. And in between green but I like I like it brighter than the dark green because there's gonna be enough dark green ships I got you know the Klingon bird of prey to build two of those and they're gonna be you know mixtures of greens on the halls but mainly a, a you know a darker green not as dark as the Katinga but and then for the Romulan I got the the uh, Derek or whatever, however you say that, the one from Next Generation, which is one of my favorite ships, that that uh, Romulan ship, and uh, and that's in a green, mainly in a dark, but it has some light highlights in it. Um, I got another Klingon battle cruiser, Katinga class. Which I'm gonna do more of a beat up, like the ones in the beginning of uh, the motion picture, and then I got the bigger version of the ramen uh, bird of prey, which is a newer version. So it gives you the clear bulbs here, so I can make those lit. It's got the correct angle on the wings, because I think the original old one they they were completely straight out, but these do angle. Um, I have the smaller version, which is really cool, but it's going to be nice to have this bigger version. And she is, she's got a size to her. I think there's a lot of inaccuracies. They don't show, have anything for the windows in the front. Um, they don't, there's more windows on the sides, which I might poke through myself up here on the top and stuff like that I th think there's two big ones here I can look off the smaller one because I think the smaller one has more correct detail and uh, but still they have a bigger version of it it's nice and then there's the bird that's gonna go on the bottom of this I think it should be about the same color I remember but um you know we can get her all ready, and then uh, when the decals come in, get a clear on it, and when the decals come in, put the decals on it, clear it again, and we're done. So we'll get her all built, but she's probably going to be sitting, because I, I know it's been a while already, but I have a feeling it's going to be even longer. But he did say to... You know, you can email him to see what's up with the order. And plus, I have two uh, Klingon bases that are coming. Which would have gone nice. With, well, at least this one. But I think one's going to go for the Bird of Prey. And the other one's going to go for the Katinka class. I'm not even sure what I got two for. I think they were just so cheap it was easier to order two. I'm not sure. Cause the one's gonna the the newer bird of prey is gonna, it's gonna be on a landed, so the other one's gonna be flying because that came with a cheap stand, old school. Um, yeah, it's the only raw Klingon ships I have left, so yeah, we'll use it for the motion picture uh, Katinga. Cause I think that comes with a shitty base too. Cause it is an older kit. And I almost could have built this <laughs> at the same time. Ooh, look at the blue. Look at that blue. Because it's about, I think it's a hair bigger. 
close to the same size, but it might be a hair bigger. Judging by, you know, that might be good. It's, for, it's real close. Can't go by the engines because the Katinga engines were bigger than the D7 engines. Because that's, that's an engine right there. And look how big that is all the way to there. And those are, you know, so you can't go. But yeah, here's the base for it. Yeah, so we're definitely going to get And it's okay because you can sneak the wire up through there from behind. This piece clips down. You could sneak it up through behind and do it that way. But and I might have to order some new stickers for this. Yeah, especially if they keep getting squished. But I probably should see if I can get replacement stickers for it. Or stickers. Decal. But that's all she wrote for tonight. So I hope everybody has a good night. And I will see you next time for the next, uh, next episode here. But there, one more look at the Dueling D7s. Klingon and Romulan version. Alright, have a good night.